Um, well, I think I'll accept the premise. It, it was telling me to not to accept the premise of a question, but I think it is fair to say that this is a, a difficult time for the Conservative Party. It's the worst election defeat uh, that we've had for well, as long as anyone can remember, really. Um, it was a defeat we brought upon ourselves. It wasn't a defeat because of a love of alternatives, and it wasn't a, a defeat brought about by the thousands of Conservative councillors and activists or the 100,000 more uh, party uh, members, uh, it was brought on by the parliamentary party, its inability to deliver uh, on what the public were wanting us to do and to look like we were not united. And this conference is the first time that the members have the chance to meet um, the parliament, represent the parliamentary party. I'm the party chairman, I'm going to go out first, um, but also chance to meet um, the new leaders. So yeah, it is, it's, it's difficult and um, there have been some difficult decisions over the last few weeks, obviously, we've had to uh, do some downsizing at party headquarters, CCHQ, that's quite natural. Uh, that happens after, after an election. But I've also spent a lot of time over the summer talking to former MPs who lost their seat, and that's experience I know, I've been through it myself, it can be tough, not just for yourself, but you also feel for your staff who lose their jobs, uh, and you feel for your constituents, and a lot of us would have had campaigns running when we lost our seats that were important to local people. Um, and also talking to members, because the other thing is, interestingly, talking to members, is they've got lots of good ideas. So it's a mixed bag, but uh, what may be taken on, I like a challenge. Well, it is a challenge, and I, I know many of those who lost seats and those who campaigned very hard. Um, how much have you had to do a little bit of that arm around the party and go, I'm, I'm here to hear it? A lot. Um, I've uh, I opened up my e the chairman email account, so it would accept uh, emails from members, which you know, I, perhaps a little novel. Uh, but the reason for that was that I wanted to hear what party members had to say, and you know, I'm going through. I'm going through slowly, but I'm going through more, and I'm reading them all myself. I think it's important to do that. Important time to do that. I remember when Dominic Cummings did the um, Barnard Castle uh, in the middle of COVID. Um, I remember all these wave of emails coming to me as a constituency MP and I wanted to read them because I knew people were going to be sharing what they really raw felt all about. And this is a bit like, a bit like that experience for our party members. They wanted us what they uh, had to say. So I think it's important that as party chairman I read, uh, read all, all of those uh, thoughts and, um, and yeah, try and uh, help former MPs. you got to remember, uh, well, there are only 121 Conservative MPs. There was no love for Labour. But we only end up with 121. We're the only effective opposition in Parliament. The Democrats aren't doing that. Reform, talk a lot, don't do it much. So it's the Conservative Party in Parliament, Parliamentary Party, that's got to provide that, um, uh, that response. But we have lots of former MPs, very good people, and some great candidates out there who would still like to play a role in their local communities, doing some of those campaigns they might have been doing when they were an MP. Uh, being able to, to speak up for conservative uh, values in their area with a lot of knowledge of running ministerial departments in some cases. So we want to draw, draw those people and bring the talents into the party and that's one of the things that I will be uh, doing after conference which is making sure that in each of the regions of the country we have a group of people who are accessible to local associations to help with um, local campaigning, local media, um, helping with fundraising and membership. Lots of the candidates have already signalled that the structures, the processes, even the personnel of the party will have to change. You, you're working with lots of them at the moment. That must be hard as well for them and for you. But you also hear there is a degree of disappointment that it's not working the way it is. Yeah, I think people are talking about the party, professional party in that, that instance, although there are people talking about the voluntary parties too number of volunteers, the, the structure of associations, and that's part of the review process. Perhaps we can talk a bit more about that. But, you know, it's always good to hear opinions and viewpoints from uh, leadership candidates. Of course, only one of them is going to be leader, but all viewpoints are, are useful to, to have. You know, one of the benefits I have coming in as chairman now is, you know, I, in my pre-political life, you know, I was a consultant, I restructured um, a telephone company, a national phone company, I rescued a airline from bankruptcy and wrote the business plan to recover. So I'm, I'm all ears for, for ideas, um, but I think 
for all those ideas that the leadership candidates have, you know, I will want to test their ideas against the same metrics I test other people's ideas to find out what ultimately is the most sensible uh, step of reform to create uh, or rebuild the party as that election winning force, but with an eye on the next election and future elections. So that means more modern techniques, it means broadening our appeal to groups who share our values but aren't part of the active base of the Conservative Party. It means opening up to new generations of Conservatives and trying to change the issue, that, challenge that age uh, issue that uh, in the last election was probably so, so significant for us. So yeah, that's we need a, we need a professional organisation that feels comfortable with the techniques to win campaigns uh, uh, that are ahead of us, but also a professional campaign that can support the voluntary party reconnecting uh, with the country we want to represent. Let's have a chat about the review. Mm. I guess there's a process there. We need to go through a process of reviewing, and then you get people come up and go, I don't need yeah. a review to tell me what happened. Well, we do I know what happened. Right. We do need a review. And first of all, the right way to start a review is to look at the other reviews we've done and see, well, in those reviews, and we had one by Lord, uh, Lord Feldman in 2015, uh, we had one by Eric Pickles, the Lord Pickles, in 2017. So to look at what was recommended there and have we implemented them? Or did we not? And other good reasons why we didn't. So part of that is input into uh, the review. Part of it is the input we've got speaking to former colleagues, people who stood in the election, their, their thoughts of what happened in terms of national campaign messaging, what was happening in terms of local support, what was happening in terms of asking candidates to move their campaigns from A to B, what was happening on the selection of candidates. Uh, lots of feedback, as you might imagine, on all those topics, so that will feed into the review. Uh, and then getting some external viewpoints in uh, to, to the review. Um, we've already got perspectives from the Association of Conservative Peers, excellent report, they called it Project Phoenix. Um, I've read it, um, I've spoken to uh, uh, members of the House of Lords, get their viewpoints from it. That'll feed into the review. But we need ultimately to have a group that's going to synthesize all that, l reach out for more perspectives, and then decide on all the various recommendations they make, which ones make sense, and then to oversee the implementation. One of the concerns I have sometimes with reviews is we ask some people to come together, provide the review, and then they all go away. And nothing gets done. So with this review, I want them to stay for a while to oversee the, to have authority for a period of time so they can oversee the implementation of the recommendations that we have. Um, so I'm pulling together a team uh, to do that and be, uh, be announcing that later on Sunday. What are you going to be telling people? What, what message do you want to really land to them, given we've just described how people might be in a certain mood as they arrive? Well, that's important, the mood that people are in when they arrive. Remember, this is the first time that party members will have had direct contact with the parliamentary party, which, having read through a lot of emails that members say, they're saying, it's on you guys. Right? So, and I'm the party chair. So I'm going to be that person. And so it is important to, uh, to, to, to recognise, for me to recognise that strength of, of feeling. And I don't think... You know, some might, might criticise being you know, you know, self-indulgent, navel-gazing. Uh, I personally, I just think it's respectful to people. Um, you know, we are a proud political party, but we're, we're the most successful political force in the United Kingdom, probably one of the most successful political forces everywhere else. This has been a terrible blow. And we know it's just one part of the party, or largely one part of the party, that brought it upon us. Now, many people feel it's recoverable. We know that some voters are already getting voters' remorse, buyers' remorse for the, the election. Um, so the first thing is, I think, is to take that level of, of concern of members seriously and address some of the points that they have. So a large part of what I say will be, will be doing, doing that. Um, the other is to uh, draw on some of the positive experiences. So there are some uh, walk-on parts, as you, if you like, that will happen. There was, and these come from some of these uh, the conversations. So um, the candidate who uh, stood for Birmingham Ladywood, which is where the conference centre where the conference is being held is in Birmingham Ladywood uh, constituency uh, she was on one of the, the feedback calls and she was great but really positive story so I've asked her to come and say a few words and then there was a, on another call there are a couple of candidates um, from up in the northwest 
um, who stood uh, one in a seat that I think we would define as challenging at the best of times uh, and another who was in a marginal seat and when they were talking on the call they talked about how they would worked together and how they found a rewarding experience so I want them to come and share some of things so so it sets the fact that yes there were problems in the campaign uh, how it was run but we also as, as is always the case a general election is also 650 uh, individual battles and there are some positive uh, outcomes from that so a lot of speeches go to me about that and there's a bit about the review and letting a bit, uh, the conference know a bit more about the review and then the third is some important themes of change that I feel that in my role as interim chairman until November 2nd I want us to make progress on so that when the new leader comes in uh, on the 2nd of November he or she has some ideas on some of the things that we know we need to do and we think are important so uh, for example uh, it's important uh, one of the messages we got was that uh, voters members felt that we had lost sight of our core conservative values now we hadn't but we were buffeted by events so we had obviously initially it was back to the great deficit the labor left in 2010 and the coalition which more things a bit because it had to be two parties then we had the Brexit issue, which divided everyone on another set of issues. And then we had COVID that came in. And then the costs of paying back the cost of COVID. All of those events and all of that time, the public obviously saying, we want the Conservatives to run, the Conservatives to run. But that has shaken people's sort of clear sighting of Conservative values, those small C values. So we need to reassert that. We know that in the university campuses we are not engaged fully enough in the battle of ideas, we're not winning the battle of ideas with the left. We know that we have a great set of uh, think tanks out there uh, that have conservative values, but we haven't harnessed that as a party and we need to build up our research department. So in the great era of our core values and developing uh, themes around that, that's a huge piece of work and so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Daniel Hannon, Lord Hannon, to come and help shape that over now and between now and November 2nd to uh, put his ideas down, working with people in CCHQ uh, to try and help structure what we think that would be uh, for the piece of work for the new leader to do post November 2nd. Similarly, and this points to the issues not just really being need for change, not just being 2019, post 2019, but longer term change. You know, I think, I think if we're honest, you know. Um, the Conservative Party has been asked to uh, lead this country because we were, for many, many decades, stitched firmly into the fabric of our nation in all those little organisations and towns and villages and cities across uh, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And through no particular reason, no one's fault, over the last two decades, my two decades, my observation would be that we've allowed ourselves in some important ways to become unstitched from that fabric. And we need to do some work to reconnect because it really is true. And I represent it. I represent North Bedfordshire now. Uh, I'm a Bedfordshire bloke. Um, but I represent Bedford before, town of Bedford before. And Bedford is one of the most ethnically diverse areas and very competitive with Labour. And I was very competitive with, between us and Labour. I knew that whichever community I was in, there were conservative values. Didn't always vote conservative, but you could go and talk to people. They would say, oh, yeah, I agree with you. They might support you. Similarly, I set up a, a, a community business school. Uh, I believe in, I'm a free market person. I believe in capitalism. I believe in enterprise, the spirit of enterprise. And I set up this community business school. We ran it on five Thursday evenings in Bedford. Uh, and I thought we might have 50 people show up. We had 300 people show up and loads of young people. Because guess what? A lot of young people like the idea of starting their own business. They like the idea of creating things. They like the idea of putting their talents to work. Yes, to make money, but mostly because they want to do something with their life. And, and an enterprise, a free enterprise, free markets, contested by, the, that's the best way to harness that. So I want us to do something on that. So on this idea of connectedness, how we reach out, all those different ways, uh, I'm going to ask Penny Mordant to come and help put some of that together. She connects so well with people. That's my observation as an MP, where she talks with, connects with people. I know a lot of people like her as well. So let's see those two put some ideas in. There's other things I'm going to do, as I say, I think more more on uh, training and development 
the Conservative Party, I think, is a fantastic talent development machine. We never really harness it in an effective way, uh, but we can do more on that. So lots and lots of things, I think, in terms of the third part of speech that will be what, if I'm talking technically, uh, uh, I won't say in speech, but we sort of strategic sprint. So what can we put on these strategic areas of change together that looks like it can be an effective plan of action to help us put ourselves in position to be once again that willing political force that we can present by November the 2nd to the new leader and that's what I'm asking uh, Daniel and uh, Penny to help me with and I'll get some other people to help with some other things too. And I think what it seems to be is an answer to one of the questions that I get quite a lot privately is I'm concerned we're not done burning yet I feel like there's still some some things to work out and you're saying one up my view has been and I've written it on con home I'm not sure you've got that luxury mm. it's you've got to get up and you've got to do this you uh, may poo poo calls to unite but you don't really have the luxury of choice not to is that fair well look I definitely agree that there's no point just sitting around and just just moping in a corner I mean but it is important to address that but that is the start of then what are we going to do about it and unity comes when you show that you have a clear direction, that you're good at putting people to work, that people are enthused by that work, and that people come on board with what they uh, want to do. And I think people will like the idea that we're going to become much more active on our campuses, that we are going to be positive about conservative ideas. I think they're going to like the idea that we're going to be extolling the virtues of free enterprise again, that, that, that the idea that you take a risk and get a reward uh, you know, is something the Conservative Party is going to declare uh, positively, and that will be part of our outreach to connectedness, that we are going to take the Conservative message to all different communities and to all different ages and all different parts of the country. And to, you know, being a member of the Conservative Party demonstrates that you care about democracy. It demonstrates that you believe in your country. And so let's get more people to join the party and part of that, or find affinity with us in a way that makes them feel that they're part of what we're trying to do. That's how you get unity, being positive in the direction. You say, you absolutely agree. You can't just sit around uh, tending to your wounds. You have to patch up your wounds, get up, and get back into the battle. I have to ask, would you like to carry on doing it after November? That's not a decision for me to make. Uh, I'll tell you what, how I look at this. Uh, uh, my way of looking at it is, uh, I have this uh, job until November 2nd. Part of that has been really tough over the summer letting people go, talking to people lost their uh, jobs as MPs, talking to candidates who uh, didn't win. Um, but part of it is also looking at and using my life experience thing well, in the party and outside. What is it that we need to do? What are the priorities we need to do? And then fearlessly, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a former consultant. I can take your watch and tell you the time. Right? But equally, I can fearlessly say, here's what I think you need to do to the new leader about this part of your mission. And here are my recommendations for what you need to do. And if he or she likes that plan, then he or she can ha and I can have a conversation about who might be right to take it forward. Thanks very much indeed for talking to Conservative Home. Thanks.